Today on Hands On Photography, we are in my lab. <laughs> I, yeah, you can call it a lab. It's just my dining area. But we're going to do a follow up on our macro photography show. So stick around. Hands On Photography is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. This episode of Hands On Photography is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. Yes, it's that easy. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash hop. Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Ant Pruitt and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. I'm coming to you live from my mm, dining area and part of my kitchen. Yeah, I'm not sitting in the home studio today. This is going to be another lab episode, uh, just like what we've done a couple of times before here on the show. But yeah, this podcast, I like to sit down and share with you different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer as well as a post processor. But today we're actually focusing more on the camera and uh, some techniques and things that you can look out for, so on and so forth. If this is your first time catching the show, thank you for popping in and welcome to you. Now do me a favor and go ahead hit and hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app of choice whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcast, or, or Google Play, or whatever, we're on all of those different apps. It's not hard to find. It's just search for me and hands-on photography at Twit, and you'll see us pop up. Or you can just go on over to the website to see our different subscription options there. That's twit.tv slash hop. Again, that's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography. So now let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. Okay, so previously we talked about macro photography. Last week I gave you a bit of an introduction and talked about what it means to do macro, macro photography. Essentially, you're trying to fill the frame uh, with a particular subject and it's usually a really, really tight photograph, okay? And a lot of times it could be something totally inanimate, just a real random object like a quarter or a penny or anything like that, or even a hair, something. It, Anything tiny, you want to try to take that tiny object and fill the screen and get as much detail as possible with your shot. The catch and the problem is your cameras have what they what they call a particular focal plane. So you can't always put your camera really, really close to the object because you'll go out of focus. And that's not good if you're trying to get details. So what you end up doing is using attachments such as uh, lens attachments, or in the case that I'm talking about today on my DSLR, is an extension tube. And that changes the focal plane of my camera sensor, allowing me to get closer to my subject and being able to zoom in even tighter to pull out all of the details that I possibly can. So today we're going to take a couple different uh, macro shots with some, some things that I got here at the house. We got a trusty uh, dandelion from outside because some dandelions are still growing in my lawn. Don't judge me. Yes, there are weeds in my lawn. But then we also have uh, a random succulent that Queen Pruitt has all over the house. Figure she didn't mind me putting one of them up as a model, right? I hope not. She's not listening. But yeah, we're going to shoot those objects and try to get a little bit of detail and just show you how this is done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk over to the camera and I'm going to switch to this other camera so you can see the setup and what we're working with. OK, so let me let me just let me just move over there. Here's my 6D Mark II and I'm just sitting up, sitting over here at my uh, dinner table and I grab a softbox. This is a uh, two by one softbox uh, that's just got some CFL bulbs in it to give me a little bit of extra light. And I have a dandelion right here. Just grab that out of the yard. And I want to take a picture of that nice and tight. But the problem is I can't particularly just hold it here in my hands because I wouldn't necessarily be able to hold it steady. Now, if you're a twit listener, I'm pretty sure you all have been doing a little bit of soldering in your time and, and just goofing off with, with electronics. So you probably have one of these little items right here called the helping hands. 
And I had a one or two of these laying around in the studio. So I'm going to use these little helping hands to just hold the dandelion for me so I can frame it up and take a photograph. So now I have it set right here in front of my lens with this extension tube on it. It's marked as a 20 millimeter extension tube. And then there's my lens right there. So my 24 to 105 lens is now off of my camera frame, off of my camera sensor just a little bit, allowing me to get a little bit closer to my subject. So what I'm doing now is just gonna line up the subject in front of the camera, like so. And then I'm gonna set my camera to manual focus because when you're using, when you're doing macro photography, so this is where it really gets interesting. When you're doing macro photography, especially when you're dealing with an extension tube or, or Ex, uh, ex, external lenses, your focus is going to be a little bit challenging at times, especially be, if you're using uh, a wide open aperture like f4 or f2.8 or something like that, because the depth of field is shallow and it gets even more shallow when you have an extension tube or using an external lens. I highly recommend using manual focus on your lens and not use the autofocus because the autofocus is just going to sit there and hunt and hunt and hunt and it might find focus and it may not. But with manual focus, you have full control and you can just go ahead and knock that out yourself. OK, so I'm going to switch back over here, let you see what I'm doing. And again, I'm in manual focus on my lens and I have it framed up and I'm looking at my LCD here and just tune in the focus to where it looks pretty sharp. And I think right about here, it's going to work. And look, I even have this thing pretty close to my lens. And I'm also shooting on a tripod. That's another thing that you definitely want to do when you're shooting macros. Get yourself a nice sturdy tripod that's going to lock that camera down and reduce camera shake. OK, so I think I have it in focus now. But before I hit the shutter, I'm going to tell my camera to use a delay for the shutter. Basically, I'm going to tell it to count down for two seconds before taking the picture, because that way, for me hitting the button on here, I'm giving the camera a little bit of vibration. I don't want that. But if I go ahead and tap it now, it's going to count down and I'm not going to have the vibration and it's going to take the shot. OK. So that's something you have to consider as well. It's just good old camera shake when you're dealing with macro photography. Again, because you're so zoomed in on your subject, the tiniest of movements of your camera are really magnified and it's going to show up in the image and it's going to look really, really blurry. So now let's go on over to Lightroom and take a look at this shot just straight out the camera. All right, so here we are in Lightroom and it yeah, looks pretty good. This is the dandelion. It is filled in all over the frame, looking fairly sharp, I might say. If I was to go into my develop module here and just try to push up some of the clarity, it'll look pretty good. I like that. Now, there's something else that I could consider here. And if you go all the way back to the beginning episodes of the show, I want to say maybe like the the third or fourth episode where we talked about the exposure triangle, we have to consider uh, the, the exposure triangle as far as what, what's, what's going to happen with the image when we change the shutter speed, when we change the aperture, when we change the ISO. Right now, my aperture is set to f4, which is going to give me a fairly shallow depth of field. And if I take that number and close that aperture down to say F11, I'm not going to have as much of a shallow depth of field and a lot more things are going to be able to get in focus. So I'm going to push that aperture up and try to see if I can get a little bit more of the seedlings off of the dandelion to be in focus just right out the gate. But also when you do that, you have to take in consideration your ISO and your shutter speed because you're going to lose some light. So I'm going to push, push this up to about F11. Yeah, F11, and it's going to be a lot darker. And then I'm going to take the shutter speed down to 1 15th of a second, like so. And before I snap the shot, 
we're going to take a few seconds to thank this week's sponsor, the fine folks at ExpressVPN. This episode of Hands On Photography is brought to you by ExpressVPN. There are tons of VPN providers out there, and some of you may have even used a VPN before. I recommend brands to my listeners that I trust and can say that ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market. It doesn't log your data, internet speeds are always fast, and it's easy to use. And they have this new lightweight UDP protocol. It's really, really fast. So protect yourself with the VPN that I use and trust. Use my link expressvpn.com slash hop today and get an extra three months free on a one year package. That's expressvpn.com slash hop. Visit expressvpn.com slash hop to learn more. All right. So now I told you I changed the, the camera settings. We're now at F11. Uh, one one fifteenth of a second, so it's a little bit slower shutter to let in a little bit more light. And I kept the ISO at about uh, 400 or so. So let's go ahead and switch on over to my other camera here. And then we will take this photograph. Got the timer on there, of course. Let me check focus one more time. There we go. Yeah, focus still looks good. All right, so now I'm gonna hit the shutter and it should do a countdown. All right, snapped our shot. So let's go back over here to Lightroom and see how this is looking. Okay, so now let's compare this one to the previous shot. And uh, that's with me adding that clarity adjustment. So I'm gonna take that off. Okay, there we go. So this is the first shot and this is the second shot. Now you notice how much sharper this one is. Again, I changed that aperture from F4 to F11. So I got a lot more in focus pretty easily without moving the subject around or doing anything else there. So yeah, that's the route I would go. And you can play around with this in post-processing to see what works best for you. I'd like to take something like a good old uh, water bottle like this here. This is just a little spritzer and maybe just spritz a little bit of water on it to give it another bit of an effect or heck, you might even make it just stand out and pop a little bit more and just make it a little more interesting to look at. So I'm going to spray some water on this just for the heck of it. But you must know it, depending on what your subject is, that water may even ruin the subject. So no, it's a crapshoot. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> All right, so we'll just a little spray, just a little spray. And just a little more. See, that doesn't look like it's doing a lot, so I'm just gonna totally saturate it and probably should cover up my lens too. There we go, that's looking better. That's a whole lot of water on my table. All right, so now, we're going to go ahead and see if we can frame this up. It should already be framed nice and nice and pretty. Let's go ahead and make sure the focus is good. There we go. I think that's going to work. Okay, so now do the countdown on the shutter and we'll hop on over here to Lightroom. Oh yeah, that's better. See, that's a lot more detail and a little bit more interesting to take a look at. Uh, so let's push this clarity a little bit just to see what happens. Yeah, look at that. Fascinating, right? You can truly see the details. Even when you zoomed in, everything is nice and sharp. And the beauty of this is you can crop down and still get all of that detail. Versus when you normally crop in on an image, you lose the detail and you lose some image quality but that's something that you can play around with. Now, before we go, we wanna do one more shot and I'm going to switch over to let you see our other little model here and that's this cactus or succulent. Yeah, it's a succulent, right? I don't know. She's crazy about all of these things and they're everywhere. I just know that they're green and they look like cactuses and they're everywhere. So we're gonna move this into the frame and try to line it up a little bit. Okay, so let's see, it's a little tall. I could probably slide it back some because this is a little tall or I could just move, raise the tripod up. Let's do this, we'll raise the tripod just a touch. 
not too much, but just a touch. There we go. And again, if you have a tripod, I hope it's not something that's too cheap because quite honestly, the cheap tripods, they're good on your wallet, but they are not good for your photography. They're wobbly. They don't last very long because they get beaten up pretty easily. So spend a, spend a couple bucks on your tripod. I don't care if it's 60 bucks or 70 bucks. That's, that's the least I would recommend spending the very, at the very least. Okay, so we now have this framed up. I'm going to turn it. I think it's a little more interesting if I turn it this way. Yeah, we're going to turn it. There we go. And then we're going to find focus like so. Then we're going to hit the shutter and hop on over to Lightroom. Lightroom says, yeah, it's pretty nice. This is a little fuzzy succulent. I guess that was a little fuzzy hair growing out of it. Can plants grow hair? I don't know. But let's step it up a notch. Let's go ahead and grab our little water spritzer and put something on here that's gonna make it stand out a little bit more. Just a little bit of drops of, drops of water. Cover up the lens, Ant. Saturate it, saturate it, saturate it. Last time I talked to my friend Don Kamarechka, the awesome macro photography scientist, he said when you're spritzing and spraying water on your subject, spray until you think you sprayed too much and then spray again because he guarantees you didn't spray enough. So that's what I just did. It is totally saturated now. So let's go ahead and take a look, see through the camera here. Focus looks pretty good. I'm going to hit it again. There we go. I like that. And get our focus right. I can even reframe because I'm seeing some more in the background. There we go. It's reframed. All right, hit the shutter, go back to Lightroom. Oh boy, that's pretty. Look at that drop of water. Look at that detail. Very, very nice. Now, if you're looking at my screen here, you notice these couple uh, petals here in the front. They're not in focus very much. And that's, again, we're dealing with a different depth of feel even at f11 it's still a little bit hard when you start talking about some broad uh objects like this and trying to pull them in focus all the way across the frame i can play around with this a little bit more and put focus on another part of the plant it's not too hard so let's give that a shot so we'll walk over here and just even tap on my screen Sometimes tapping on your screen can help tell you where you get in focus. And as I turn my focus ring, these forward pedals are now coming back into focus. So let's hit it with a little water one more time. Like that. Hit the shutter. Go back to Lightroom. Yeah, see now the front pedal is a little bit more in focus and I can take this shot and make it look even better by doing essentially a photo blend inside of Photoshop. I could take that shot that I just snapped and I could take the previous shot, put them into Photoshop, blend them together to where everything is more in focus. And as a matter of fact, we're going to talk about doing that next week. So you're going to have to tune in. Okay. So that's going to do it for this week's episode, folks. I hope this has been helpful for all of you just as we get started with macro photography and allow yourself to just put around at your home and find some inanimate objects to take photos of and just see how sharp you can get them with the tiniest of details. 
Again, pick up anything in your home. I, I literally picked up a dandelion from the yard outside. If you don't have a dandelion, grab a random leaf off of a tree or a blade of grass. It could be anything. See how close you can get your camera. See how, how much you can get into focus. And if you need some extension tubes, I'll have some, uh, some links in our show notes that links to a couple of extension tubes. Heck, these that I'm using right here, I believe they're only like 30 bucks and you get three in a set. So you never know. Just give these things a shot. It's, it's not terribly expensive. It's a lot of fun to experiment and it can really help step up your photography game. All right. If you have any other questions, feel free to shoot me an email at hop at twit.tv. I always enjoy getting emails from y'all. If you want to have an image critiqued or just have some questions about anything else in general in the photography world, or you can hop on over to our Twit online forums at twit.community, where we talk a lot of different tech there and even talk some photography tech too. Okay. Thank you all again for the tremendous support. Thank you all for following me over on Twitter and Instagram at ant underscore Pruitt. And thank you to my main man, Mr. Victor, for always making me look and sound good here on the show. My man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right, folks, we'll get out of here and we'll catch you next week here on Hands-On Photography. So now safely create and dominate. And I'm still looking for justice for Brianna Taylor. Take care. Want more Twit? Well, check out Smart Tech today. It's at twit.tv slash STT. It's the show where Matthew Casanelli and I cover everything there is to know about smart tech. It's automation. It's connected devices. It's smart home. It's all those goodies and so much more. We get the news. We get the latest devices. We do reviews. Everything. You got to check it out. Twit.tv slash STT for Smart Tech today.